Hey, everybody. Hello, hello out there, world. How are you? It's Friday. Happy Friday. Friday morning for me. Maybe Saturday, Saturday morning. Very early Saturday morning for some of you. Lots of, lots of stuff going on in the, in the chat here. Already talking about commas in the chat. Lots of familiar people. Some new people there too, but lots of familiar faces and names. Zainab is there. French Leo. Jose Antonio Chong Alvarez says hi. Hello. Steve is there. Vivek. Melinda. Victor. Diary is there. All right. Lots of people. Okay, cool. Well, good to see you. It's, it's good to be here. It's always nice to see you. Now, I'm looking at myself. I look, I look a little blue. Do I, do I look a little blue in that? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not feeling blue. I'm feeling OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, my skin is looking a little on the blue side. <laughs> I'm very much alive, though. I can breathe. I'm not choking. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm OK. Yeah. I look blue, but it's, it's OK. Um, yeah, so it's Friday morning for me. I, I am, I'm like Avatar. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. I'm one of the guys from Avatar. I am coming to you live from Vancouver, uh, from our studio here in, at uh, the Canadian College of English Language in downtown snowy Vancouver. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. Baskar is saying, hi, he's new. You're new, you're from India. Cool, welcome. It's always good, it's always good to see New people. No, I'm not feeling blue. I don't have the blues. <laughs> don't worry. You guys are funny. Trey Brown's in the house. Good to see you. Vivek's coming to you live from the moon. Yeah, sometimes I wonder, Vivek. Yeah. All right, so lots of people here. This is great. As I said, I'm, I'm coming to you from Vancouver. For anybody who's new, hi, I'm Sean. And I will be your blue-skinned teacher for the next hour or so. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, welcome. So today we're, we are going to continue with this is an intermediate level class, right? Not too, not too high, not too low, just, just right. <laughs> okay. Jonata, you're saying what is feeling blue? Well, blue means sad. Okay, if you're feeling blue, it means you're feeling sad. Although, I don't know if young people today really use that expression very much. It's kind of an older expression, I think. Um, if I'm feeling sad, I don't seriously ever say I'm feeling blue today, I don't, I don't think. Mm. Ah, coffee. Okay, so, once in a blue moon, once in a blue Sean. <laughs> All right, so intermediate level, 120, all right. Um, if you have questions during the class, of course, uh, put your questions in the chat, and I will try to answer them as best as I can, as often as I can, OK? So if I miss a question, just put it in there. Don't get angry at me, <laughs> OK? Pink Hill says, Blue Monday. Well, it's Friday. Yeah, it's Blue Friday, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's get, let's get rolling here, guys. Let me go into the lesson. Here we are in SMART. Um, for anybody who's in the class, you can go into Unit 7. We're going to finish up with Unit 7 today. We're going to uh, start the next unit next week. Um, and as I said uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, commas, OK? So for anybody who's, who's in the course, you can go into, into writing 7.2 called Using Commas. Now, I'm going to hop out of this, and I'm going to go into my own little um, presentation here, OK? So 
Gabriel, you never get angry at me? Yeah? Well, that's good to know. At least somebody. Yeah? <laughs> All right, so today, as I said, we are going to, we're going to look at commas. This guy, this, this, this cute little guy here, yeah, which causes so many students so much pain and headaches and heartaches and heartbreak, right? This cute little comma. I have so many questions that come in about how to use the comma. And there are, there are clear rules. That's a good thing about punctuation, is that sometimes in language, the rules are very hard um, because there's so many exceptions to rules, right? But with, with the comma, the rules are pretty clear, all right? The rules are pretty clear. Except, um, <laughs> Vivek, when you say, I hate this guy, I hope, I hope, you're, talking about, I hope you're talking about the comma, not me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It would be strange if he kept coming back if he hated me so much. <laughs> okay, so the comma. I know some of you hate him, right? You have, you have uh, hard feelings <laughs> uh, with, the, with the comma. But... So, okay, sometimes the comma can, can, can sneak up on you, right? But, you know, some, some people think the comma is this evil thing that's going <laughs> that's to come and get you, right? <laughs> but the comma can be your friend, right? The comma can turn on you for sure, right? If you don't know how to use the comma, he can, he can, he can bite you with his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nora wants to throw a comma off a cliff. Commas, if you know how to use the comma, the comma is there <laughs> uh, to help you. Okay? The comma is a gift. You have, to, you have to learn to love the comma, right? Give the gift of comma. The comma is a gift of love to help you make your writing clear, right? To help you, to help you help your reader understand what you're trying to say. So don't hate the comma, love the comma, right? Even for Valentine's Day this this year, <laughs> give give her the gift of the comma punctuation. Yeah. Okay. So I want I want you guys to love the comma. The comma is going to be Gabe, Gabriel's. <laughs> Gabriel is going to be uh, best besties with the comma, yeah? His new best friend. Saverio Chirico is saying hello to me. I'll say hello to you back. <laughs> right. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about how, how to love the comma, right? We're going to look at um, some of the basic rules, and I'm sure you guys have questions. And... Uh, and I will try to clarify some of your, your concerns or doubts about the comma. <laughs> Rosa, you want, to get, you want a comma in a little heart-shaped box? Alejandra's here. Hi. <laughs> okay. So let's move on. Let's, let's, log, let's, let's talk about the rules here, okay? The comma has, in sentences, four main rules. We're going to start today with three, okay? We're going to see how well we do, and then we're going to move on from there. As I said, this is, this is the intermediate level class. So for some of this stuff, I'm sure you guys have seen some of this before, because I know some of you are a higher level. Everybody's welcome. Alejandra, yeah, I know. I'm blue today. <laughs> I know. Um, I guess I should have put on more, more makeup, maybe. OK, so we're going to look at the basic rules of the comma. Okay, and, um, and go from there. All right, so the first rule for the comma, one that you, you probably all know, okay, you use the comma in a list. Yeah, it's definitely the camera. It's not my, it's not my natural skin color. <laughs> okay, so listing, putting things in a list is the first place to start. I think this is the, the easiest place to start when talking about how to use the comma, okay? I mean, you're getting ready for the SAT. 
Um, well, if, there, if there's a writing component on the SAT, then yeah, you should know how to use the comma for sure. <laughs> okay, so we use the comma between words, phrases, and clauses in a list. Okay, you guys are you guys are being hard on the comma. What did he ever do to you? <laughs> I think it's unfair. I think I think the comma is being persecuted against. <laughs> okay, and Khalil Wiz is saying three items or more, and that's exactly right most of the time. There is a, a slight exception, and I will talk about that. Alejandra loves punctuation. Good, good to know, yeah? <laughs> Me too. I love it. I love it too. So words, phrases, and clauses in a list of three or more, as Khalil said. Excellent. All right, so let's look at some examples, right? First little clause here, she studied painting. She studied painting comma there, drawing, comma, and sculpting, right? So a list of, in this sentence, three gerunds, right? Three verbal nouns with I-N-G, and each item in the list, painting, drawing, and sculpting, is separated by the comma. Arginia Fernandez from the Dominican Republic, hi. <laughs> Nora, <laughs> Nora, who's killing your hopes and destroying your future? The, the, the comma? <laughs> All right. So, painting, drawing, sculpting, three items in a list. Now, I know that some of you are probably already thinking, and I see some of you talking about the, the Oxford comma, as they say, this guy, right? This guy is a, is a, a comma that people argue about, yeah? So, sometimes people ask, do I need to put the comma before and? Now, the truth of it is that teachers argue about this, okay? Some people say yes, some people say no, right? You get lots of people saying, you can just take that comma out before and, and it's fine. Okay? Bhaskar, I think, is asking the same question. The comma before and? What do you mean? Yeah, the Oxford comma, right? So, do you need this comma before and? My answer is, you don't have to, you don't have to fight, okay? We, we can agree, right? We can go back and say, if the list is clear, whoop, without it, it's fine, okay? I prefer to put that there most of the time because I, I'm a fan of commas. I think um, it helps to clarify things. So I do put that comma before and, okay? The comma can kill. <laughs> no, there's some good, there's some good sentences coming in here with, with commas, good. Yes, the, the, fighting, the fighting couple, right? So let's not fight about commas or no commas before and. My rule of thumb with the comma is, if the sentence is clear, then you probably don't need the comma, okay? But it's usually not a mistake to put it there. All right, Mohib, that's a good one. Good, okay, so that's with words. So you can, you can create lists of words, but of course, you can create um, lists of phrases as well. And now French Leo, you're saying if it doesn't change the meaning, why not avoid the, uh, the comma? Well, my, my response to that, good question, good question. My answer is, it doesn't change the meaning, but why do you have to avoid it? If you don't want to put it there, if the meaning doesn't change, that's fine. Meaning you can put it there or you can leave it, leave it out, okay? In that question, who <laughs> Who's the, who's the boss in that picture? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. Maybe that's why they're fighting. Okay, so lists of phrases. The dog ran out the door, comma, across the yard, comma, through the gate, comma, and down the street. And again, 
If you don't want to put that comma there before and, that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you have to worry about running out of commas. <laughs> oh, Luciana's there. Hey, good to see you. Saying, don't separate subject from the verb with commas right. Well, if Luciana, if you're talking about putting a comma here, like the dog comma ran, yeah, don't do that. Okay, but there are some times that you're going to insert information between the subject and verb, right? So don't, I mean, it's generally speaking, if it's just subject and verb like this, definitely don't put a comma there, right? But if you're putting more information in, you might, okay? I hope, hope that answers your question. And yes, Ian is saying, yeah, he's saying the same thing. We don't, in this sentence, you don't really need that comma there, okay? Good. Okay, so in this sentence, as I'm saying, you've got a list of phrases, okay? So phrases can be items in a list as well, and they need to be separated by commas. <laughs> yeah. Sure, a left-out comma can save, can save you ink, too, if you're typing on, a, on, a, on an old-fashioned typewriter, right? <laughs> okay. So this is phrases, but of course, and as I said, you have to use the commas. Of course, you can also make a list of clauses, right? Clauses, meaning a, a, a group of words with a subject and a verb. So sometimes we have three clauses or more in a sentence, three independent clauses, right? I don't know if it's necessarily, I don't think it's a, just Americans that call it the Oxford comma. I'm not sure. Is, is, that, is that true? Maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, so Chris likes rock. That's a clause, right? You've got the subject and the verb there. A positives you guys are asking about. We'll talk about that. If we have time, we'll get to that. That's a little bit um, more advanced, but we'll talk about that, okay? So Chris likes rock. Good for him. Peter prefers jazz. Amanda likes hip hop. And Jeff listens to listens to metal. All right, he's a metal head. <laughs> okay. So again, in this case, you've got um, four independent clauses, four complete clauses that can stand on their own. You put them together in one sentence like this, and each one has to be separated by a comma. Okay. <laughs> you guys, some of you guys in the chat, you're just, you're bananas. Okay, so the one thing about this, a little tip when it comes to the lists and words. Now, um, Khalil Wiz earlier said, Khalil, okay, Faisal, that's a good question. I'll come back to that one. Um, Khalil said you can, you can use it in, in items of three or more, but there is an exception. Let's talk about that. But first, Faisal's asking, why not put a period after each clause? So you're saying put a period here, and a period here, and a period here, right? Now, you can do that, Faisal. That's OK. But I'll tell you why not. I would say because then you would have a, a series of very short, simple sentences, right? And it will make your, your writing it will make it look very, um, well, beginner, kind of beginner level. If you say, Chris likes rock, end of sentence. Peter prefers jazz, end of sentence. You want to try to combine your sentences to get some short sentences, some long sentences, show a kind of a, a range, right? A range of sentence length and style. That's why. Faisal, okay? So, but to be, to be honest, you could do that if you wanted to. Um, Vivek, no. To your answer, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put that comma before because there, okay? <laughs> Jerry saying periods are boring. Periods are boring. Commas, super exciting, right? Commas are, <laughs> commas are very exciting. Semicolons are even more exciting. They're just, they, they'll blow your mind, right? 
<laughs> but um, yeah, that's a good question, Faisal. Thank you for that one. So the tip <clears throat> when it comes to lists or separating items with commas is that adjectives are a bit of an exception. Okay, and let me pop out here to this, to the notes. Let me make my nice and big. So as Khalil Wiz said, right, the, the magic number is three. You can't say I hmm, bought milk, comma, bread. Right? You can't do that. You can't say I bought milk, comma, bread. It has to be milk, comma, bread, and uh, cheese. Okay? Right? You need three or more. It's the same thing with the phrases. You can't say the dog ran out the door, comma, down the street, like that, okay? Two is a mistake. You need at least three. And into the park. The dog ran out the door, down the street, into the park, three. Okay? Right, Alejandro, you're saying you can, you can say milk and bread, exactly. Now, the, there is a slight exception, and that's with adjectives, okay? So if you say, for example, Sean is a kind and generous person, right? Okay, Sean is a kind, generous person. And, and a good dancer, too. Jindy, you woke up, took a bath, and went to school. It's boring? You're like, your day was boring? <laughs> All right. So in this case, when you have two adjectives, you can say that, right? If you have two adjectives before a noun, right? There's your noun. Kind is an adjective and generous and then a noun here, you can take that out and you can put, you can put a comma there, okay? Victor says, it was a great feel-good, cheerful movie. Yeah, exactly, right. I would put feel-good, maybe hyphenate it, right, like this. If you're using feel-good as, as an adjective, uh, Victor, I would say like that. Feel-good. Yesin says he's coming to Vancouver. Cool, I'll be here. Islam Benadol saying, do you miss me? Sure I do, but you're here now. So it's good to see you. <laughs> now, good, good questions. We're, we're seeing some questions come in about spacing. Okay, Chanel is saying, do I need to use a space and a capital letter after a comma in a paragraph? Now, commas, Chanel S., I say do not follow a comma with a capital. Don't, don't do that. No, definitely not. You want a lowercase letter because it's not a new sentence, okay? But you do need a space, one space, okay? If you put it together like that, that's a mistake, okay? All right, good stuff. So just remember that adjectives, my point is, adjectives can be two items separated in a comma, but only if they come before the noun, okay? You can't say this, for example. Let me take this noun away and do that. You cannot say, Sean is kind, generous. Doesn't work, okay? You have to say kind and generous. If you said, and handsome, <laughs> that's fine too. You can say that, right? You can get that out of there and say, is a kind, generous person. You need that, you need that noun. Now you guys are talking about semicolons. Right, we're not going to talk too much about semicolons today. We'll save that for another class. We, I could talk about semicolons for a whole class, okay? So that's the little exception with the first rule of list. Let me give you another rule, 
and then I'm going to make you guys do some work for me. Okay, so let me go back in here. Keep your questions coming too, guys. You guys are asking some good questions. All right, now rule number two is linking. All right, linking means connecting two things together. So we use the comma, we use the comma to make a compound sentence with what we call a coordinator, a coordinating conjunction. Coordinating conjunction, don't worry too much about that, that word. Now, Mr. Perfect is saying, is it wrong to say he is helpful and intelligent man? If you say that, Mr. Perfect, you have to say he is a helpful and intelligent man, and then you're, you're good. Aaron is a silly, funny person. <laughs> yeah, right. I agree. Perfect. Okay, good stuff, guys. So, to make a compound sentence, yeah, right. Bose is, Bose is ahead of me here, talking about fanboys, and, but, so, or, for, nor, and yet. These seven magic little words called coordinating conjunctions, we... <laughs> Sean's a gamer and a game changer. <laughs> you guys are funny. So these seven words we can use to combine two simple sentences to create a compound sentence. Okay, some of you guys know this as fanboys. Let me go in here. Right? Fanboys, meaning for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. These seven magic words that we can use to make compound sentences. Okay? Now, I put them in a slightly different order here. Well, because I put them in order of, of probably more, more common usage, right? And, but, so, and, or are the four more common ones. For, nor, and yet not quite as common, although I think for should probably be at the bottom. It's probably the least useful conjunction. You're not going to use it very often. Is there a fangirl? <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe in the chat there's a fangirl, yeah? Nitesh says, my internet is slow, weak, and terrible. Yeah, that's good. I mean, not good, but good sentence. <laughs> okay. Jindy says, in linking, we have to consider whether the sentence is parallel or not. That's right. Good, sense, uh, good question. Yeah. You, you want it to be the same grammatical structure on either side, for sure. Okay, so when we talk about compound sentences, and I know that you, you, have, you have learned about compound sentences before in, in other classes is when you take two simple sentences, two independent clauses, and put them together. Okay? Um, Boza, maybe. Maybe. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so the price of the apartment wasn't too high. This is a, a complete sentence, right? You can put a comma there, put your coordinating conjunction, and then say the view was amazing, right? The price of the apartment wasn't too high and the view was amazing. So you've got two clauses. This is a clause, right? It's an independent clause. Yes, Anna is saying what's a compound sentence? Good, good question. This is a compound sentence, okay? So you've got this independent clause. Subject, verb. One subject, one verb, complete sentence, okay, complete clause, and you have this, another independent clause, right, with a subject and a verb, and it's complete. So putting two together, yes, seen, with and, and the comma, and you get this compound sentence. Compound means two together or more, right? Alejandro, okay, Alejandro's answering Yasin's question. Good, thank you for that. Great. 
Yeah, good, good, good. Hack A33 is saying different subjects. Yes, but a compound sentence doesn't need different subjects. Now, look, look, we'll look at this again, okay? So we'll, or we'll look at another example, okay? So this one, I enjoy museums, which is true. I do enjoy museums. This is autobiographical, okay? Fa Faisal, do you mean the, the comma before and? That's a good question. I, I'll talk about that in a minute, okay? Nora, good, that's a good sentence, good example. <laughs> okay, so I enjoy museums, okay? That is a independent clause with one subject and one verb. Put a comma, conjunction, but I don't go very often, okay? Also true, sadly. Independent clause, independent clause, and then you've got your coordinating conjunction and comma, putting them together to make one sentence. Now some of you are asking about this comma and saying, come on, come on, is it really, is it really necessary? Do I really need to put this comma there? I, and I'll be honest, probably not, okay? If you don't put that comma there, it's probably not going to affect the meaning of your sentence. No, it's probably not going to make it confusing, but if you want to follow the technical official rules, and I know some of you out there, you like your rules, you like to follow the rules, okay? If you want to follow the strict comma rules, th that is the rule, okay? But I will show you how there's one little thing that you can, that you can, uh, that you should be aware of. Another question coming in. You are both shrewd and tenacious. That's, that's fine. I, I wouldn't, you don't need that comma there though, Jindy, for your sentence, okay? Now in this, in this sentence, you can, I'll, I'll give you the kind of the next tip, okay? Which is subject after conjunction. Is there a subject after the, the fanboy's word, okay? So let me, let me go back here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go into my notes and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. Hopefully make some sense. <laughs> so I enjoy museums, but I don't go very often. All right? Now in this sentence, I've got a subject here, right? My conjunction and then my subject after the conjunction. If there's a subject after this, you should be putting the comma there. However, if the subject is the same in both of these, then you can sometimes just take it out, right? And if you take it away, you don't need the comma because it's not a compound sentence anymore, okay? Not a compound sentence. I enjoy museums, but don't go very often. So French Leo, what's your question? If we avoid it one day, we are going to make a bad mistake. Oh, is that just an example of, of the dependent clause? We'll get to that one. You guys, are, you guys are running ahead of me here, okay? So just remember, if there's no subject after the conjunction, you don't need to put that, that comma there. But if there is a subject, you should put it there according to the strict rules of the comma. Okay? Let me see another question here. What else is coming in? I don't know why I'm here, nor do I want to know. <laughs> now some of you guys put example sentences that sometimes I wonder if you're talking about me in this class. <laughs> <laughs> Example sentences about being bored and about not knowing why you're here and about hating, hating that guy. <laughs> no subject, no comma, Nuj is saying. Good. Yeah, right. So machine made in your sentence, you didn't put a comma there. 
and it's probably it's probably okay. So, Diari, you're asking, what is this? What is the structure of this? This is a simple sentence, okay? Because it only has one subject. So, if a sentence has one subject, it has to be simple, even if it has two, uh, two verbs, right? Because in a simple sentence, uh, one subject can do multiple verbs. I mean, think about a list, right? If you said, I um, went to the store, bought bread, and walked home, that's still a simple sentence. Good. <laughs> you guys are great. Okay, so how about this? Yeah, compound, compound verb, right, you can say that. <laughs> okay, so how about this? You guys get to work, all right? This is what I want you guys to do. Um, the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at um, the present perfect. So I've, I've written some questions here with the present perfect. I want you just to add another clause to these sentences. I want you to create compound sentences with fanboys and a comma, okay? So, I have never eaten snake, comma, and then you can say but, or you can say and, or you can say so, right? I have never eaten snake, so I don't know what it tastes, well, tastes like. For example, <laughs> I'm gonna assume it tastes like chicken, right? Or maybe chicken tastes like snake, I don't know. Okay, so, Take a couple minutes, I'm going to take that away, and come up with your own ideas, all right, and finish these sentences. Make compound sentences with the commas, all right? I'm going to, I'm going to um, disappear for a couple minutes, and then we'll go over it together, okay? I'll put the, uh, the monkey music on, and uh, put your example sentences in the chat, and we'll go over it together, okay? Get to work, guys. Go for it.
All right. Good, 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 good. Lots of answers coming in. Let's go through some of them together. Now, number one says, I have never eaten snake. This is true. I have not eaten snake. Hack A33 says, this is a good one. He says, I have never eaten snake, comma, but I've eaten crocodile. Nice. I've never eaten crocodile either, but I assume it also tastes like chicken. I don't know. Just watch, watch your um, capital I there, okay? I noticed that you've, you've, got, you've got the little I on there. I's, I always has to be capital I. Good. So I've never eaten snake, but I've eaten crocodile. That's a good one. What else, do, what else do we have here? French Leo, I have never eaten snake, but I am going to my favorite restaurant to taste one of them. <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, good. Some of you guys are trying with, with nor. Now, nor is a little tricky because usually with nor, we invert the subject and the verb, right? Nor is a little special. So we say, I have never eaten snake, nor do I want to, okay? For example, you've got nor, and then you've just got that inversion there. That's really the only conjunction that we do that uh, with. Also, this is not true. I would, I would eat snake. I would try snake, yeah? <laughs> okay. But yeah, Esther tried nor. Good, good job. Good stuff. Okay, now, what about number two? He has health problems. He has had many health problems. What do we say? Who, who, what do we have here? Okay, Ali. Yeah, Ali Hader says, but I don't have any health issues. That's fine. He has had many health problems, but I, have, I don't have any health issues. Good. Very good. Okay, some of you guys went with so. Right, so he, whoops, he is very weak. Right, so he is very weak. Good. I'm not good. Not good for him. But good answer. Who, who gave me that one? Millennia, yeah? Jindy, yet he, okay, he has had many health problems, yet he looks happy. That's a more, that's a positive one. <laughs> okay. Good. What about number three? Number three, she has been living in Vancouver for five years. Lewis says, comma, and she still cannot speak French. Okay. Yeah, not, not a lot of opportunity to practice French in Vancouver. Um, but it is Canada, so you know you should be able to speak a little bit for sure. Okay, good one. What else? Esther says, and she is still enjoying staying there. Great, really good. Diari says, but she is not familiar with the roads. She is still not familiar with the roads. Great, really good. <laughs> Jamie Arnold's talking about Jon Snow. Jon Snow once called Winterfell home, but now his life belongs to the Night's Watch. <laughs> wow, good. that's a really good sentence. Really good. Good one. I'll, okay, Islam Benadel, I'll put, I'll put yours in there as well, just, just for a different answer. It's very similar to what, who, who just said it? Yari, maybe. Yet she does not know all the streets. Right, good one. Yeah, because yet, yet is that word uh, of kind of a surprising contrast, an unexpected contrast. Victor says, and she didn't see a black bear. Maybe she hasn't seen a black bear. Good. Good, good, good. Rosa, Rosa, those are good too. So she can speak English. Very good. Okay, what about the last one here? I have already seen this movie. I have already seen this movie. 
French Leo, now this is a good this is a good question. French Leo wants to know if he can say nor there. Okay? And the answer is no. You can't use nor in a in a positive statement, an affirmative statement, right? If you want to use nor here, this sentence also has to be negative. Okay? Nor is like the the negative and, right? It has to be two two negative things, okay? I haven't seen this movie nor am I interested in going to see it, okay? Good question. Okay, give me, give me another one. SMH says, so I don't want to see it. Now you said any more. Um, I don't want to see it maybe again. I've already seen this movie, so I don't want to see it again. Good. And Rosa Cassiero, that's the same one. Good. It's the same idea. Raphael saying, Westworld is an awesome TV show, but I've already forgotten everything about it. <laughs> hmm. Good. No, this is good, guys. Okay. So, let me talk about one more comma rule, right? We said we're going to go over three of the basic rules today. Okay, and we'll talk about the comma again in the future because I know how much you guys love them, right? But um, we'll come back to this. What I want to talk about now is the third rule, and then we'll do the mistake of the week. Yeah, don't, don't worry. We're going to have lots of time for the mistake of the week. And again, if you guys have questions, if I'm missing your questions, put them back in there. Okay. And Melinda's saying, nor do I want to. Yeah, you have to use inversion for nor. Good. Okay, so I'm getting distracted by the, 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 the chat. You guys are more interesting than I am. <laughs> you guys are writing some ama amazing uh, sentences in there. All right, so. The third rule, we, so far we've talked about listing, we've talked about linking, and now we're talking about introducing, okay? So we put a comma after an introductory word, phrase, or clause at the beginning of a sentence. So if you have a word at the beginning of your sentence that is kind of an introduction, you usually put a comma after it, okay? So words, phrases, clauses, let's look at some examples. A common, a very common example is the adverb. Oftentimes an adverb at the beginning of a sentence is kind of an introductory word, right? So you say, therefore, comma, the painting was worth a lot of money. Okay, I'm sure this painting is worth a lot of money. So any kind of introductory adverb, right? Like therefore, or however, or furthermore, most of these adverbs um, are followed by a comma. There are a few exceptions, kind of the shorter one-syllable um, adverbs like then, now, still. These words, you don't really need the comma there. Why? Just because, right? Just to make you crazy. Just to, just to make Vivek angry, right? <laughs> That's why. <laughs> okay. So usually with What's another kind of introductory word? Well, a person's name, for example, if you're talking to someone or if you're writing to someone, right? You say, Sean, comma, um, you are amazing. <laughs> okay. Right, good. Good, good, good. Okay, so. Um, introductory words, names, adverbs, these kinds of things, okay? And again, there are other exceptions, sometimes ver uh, adverbs of frequency, like sometimes, right? For example, let me go in here. I'll give you an exception, get rid of that, number six. Sometimes I go to the movies alone, right? Now, sometimes is an adverb and it is at the beginning of the sentence, but usually for adverbs of frequency, 
we don't put the comma there, right? But conjunctive adverbs, those adverbs that link one sentence or one idea to the next, conjunctive adverbs like therefore, right? However, um, we put a comma there. Transitional words, exactly. That's what a conjunctive adverb is. Good. Okay, so that's a little exception there. Okay, let me go back in here. Also, for introductory phrases, and I still I see some people um, saying that in there. I would say, you know what? I mean, I would say either one of those is correct, Vivek. With the comma there, it's 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 fine. I think technically you should probably have a comma there. Yeah. Okay, so um, phrases. Somebody said, in conclusion, in my opinion, in my opinion, comma, this is not his best song, right? So these introductory phrases, yeah, usually followed by, by a comma. Now, again, it really depends on um, the reader's ability to understand you. Okay, now you want to make your sentences clear. So sometimes it's kind of unnecessary. I mean, if I say, on Friday, I go to the movies alone. Some people will tell you that there's, you don't really need to put a comma after this introductory phrase, but it's certainly not a mistake if you do. Okay, if you say, or in the middle of the night, as Esther says, right, in my opinion, right, good. So on Friday, comma, I go to the movies alone. This is good. If somebody says you don't need it, it's kind of, it's true because the sentence um, is clear with or without the comma, right? Whoops, definitely not that. There we go. <laughs> okay. Faisal, what's making you crazy? <laughs> well, okay. Well, that's a crazy. That's a crazy sentence. You put that sentence. If you're not, in, if you're in the Facebook group, put that sentence on the Facebook group, and we'll talk about that. Okay. Islam, you are welcome. Diary saying, on the other hand, and then she oh she took it away, but that's fine. <laughs> on the other hand, is an introductory phrase. As a result, these are transit uh, transitional phrases. Okay. Now what I was saying, I got distracted there. If I say to Steve, Sean was a hero. <laughs> okay. To Steve, Sean was a hero. Now, if you've got an intro introductory phrase like this, that could be confusing, right? It could be confusing. So you want a comma there because the comma is your friend and he helps avoid confusion. Now, Jindy is saying, as far as I'm concerned, good. Right, and that will go into the next thing we're talking about. Dawood is saying, you, you have to work for 24 hours? Wow, maybe I, should, maybe I should teach for 24 hours, get a 24-hour stream going. What do you think? Oh, I see. <laughs> Thank you, Luciana. That's nice. Right. <laughs> All right. So the comma is for clarity. This is good. It's important. Now let's look at one more type of introductory uh, structure, and that's an introductory clause, right? An in, or a, rather, a dependent clause. An incomplete idea, although I enjoy museums, right? This is a dependent clause. If a dependent clause is at the beginning of a sentence, it needs that comma there, okay? I saw some people asking, uh, putting examples like if. It's the same thing. If you start a sentence with if, comma, you have to use the comma there, <laughs> okay? So, I, although I enjoy museums, introductory clause, comma, I rarely visit one. 
To be sure, we should write the commas. French Leo, good one. Trey saying, I'll wear my body out. What if I, are you talking about me or Dawid? He's a doctor. Yeah, so he'll wear his body out, working 24 hours for sure. <laughs> okay, so again, just to be clear what we're talking about, we're talking about introductory clauses, which is why, let me copy this and go over here, which is why most of the time, if I took this sentence and flipped it, okay, if I flipped this around like that, I'm not going to put a comma there, okay? I'm not going to put a comma there because this is not an introductory clause. This is the main clause of the sentence. This is a dependent clause. It's like an introduction to the main event, a little, a little appetizer, okay? Okay, good. Yeah, right, so Rose is a step ahead of me there, good. Lewis, that's a good, that's a good example, really good. <laughs> Got a little bit of a, a little bit of a cow lick, yeah. yeah. <laughs> However, although, Esther, I'm not sure what your, what your question is there. So can we use a comma after, oh, I see what you mean. Can, you're asking, can you put a comma after although like that? No, don't do that, good question. Because although, although is not a, a, an adverb, okay? Although is a conjunction. So with conjunctions like and, coordinating conjunctions, and, but, so, you don't put commas after that, right? You don't say something like that, that's a really good question. You don't say so, comma, no. You don't say and, comma, well, usually you don't, right? There are always gonna be exceptions. You don't say if, right? And therefore you don't say although, because these, these are not adverbs, right? They're conjunctions, so don't follow conjunctions with commas. Take that out of there. But things like however, or as a result, you, you follow with the comma. Good question. Good, 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 good. Okay. I think I answered that question already. Good. Okay, so, wow, time flies. We just went through an hour. I was going to get you guys to do some practice. Maybe I'll put some practice up on the, uh, up on the Facebook group, okay? And for any of the uh, subscribers, premium subscribers, I'll put your homework on um, the blog. That would have saying, when are you here next time? I'm here every Friday. Every Friday morning, 9 o'clock, Vancouver time. Um, but you're, wait, hey, don't be running anywhere yet, okay? We're not done yet. It's time now for, for what? For the mistake of the week, all right? We can't leave without the mistake of the week. People would, people would really hate me if I did that, <laughs> okay? So as most of you know, if you've been here before, I'm going to put a sentence up here on the screen, and I want to see if you can find the mistake, okay? What's wrong with this sentence? And it could be anything. It could be the vocabulary, the punctuation, the structure. It could be anything. Look at the sentence. I'm going to disappear for about five seconds, and um, whoever gets it fastest and first, um, you guys all have to send that person one dollar. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, who is the fastest person on the internet? Let's let's figure it out. Let me put on the monkey music. I'm going to put the sentence up here. Find the mistake. And I will be back in about five seconds. De well, it depends on how fast you guys are. Okay, here we go. Find the mistake.
Okay, who's the fastest? Now, Trey Brown saying no mistake. Wow, that would be, that's a good idea, Trey. I'm going to do that someday. <laughs> that would be so mean and brilliant if I just put a perfectly good sentence up there and, and made you guys look for the mistake for, for a whole minute. <laughs> All right, now there is, it's, there's a mistake in the sentence, but it's, there's nothing grammatically wrong with this sentence. This is a different kind of mistake. This is an awkward use of the language. This is a use of the language that when you say something, uh, a native English speaker uh, would just get a sense of something weird. Something weird is going on. And we've talked a little bit in this class about uh, things like collocation, meaning words that just work together, right? And there are certain expressions that for some reason um, have caught on and students use them. I hear students use them. I see students write them in essays. And they're just little weird expressions that we don't actually say in English. And Steve Lynn, trigger finger Steve, is the fastest draw on the internet and he got it. Good for you, Steve. All right, so everybody just mail Steve a dollar. <laughs> yeah. um, Milena, you came in a uh, close second there. And Luciana, you were there too, but I'm not sure. It depends. Maybe that's the mistake. Aaron, you got it too. Good for you. So the, the problem is, is this expression, according to me. Okay, I see this expression sometimes um, in student essays. Okay, I see a lot of student essays here at the school, um, placement tests and, and things like that. And it's a really common um, phrase that I see, and it's, it's weird, right? Because the word, the, the term according to, when we say according to, we're, we're making a reference to something outside of ourselves, something else, right? Like according to him, you can say according to Sean, this is a mistake, according to... Um, anyone or anything, okay, according to the law, for example. But to say according to me, it sounds weird because you don't, you don't refer back to yourself. Esther's saying not the first person, right, exactly. So you can say according to anybody, but not, uh, not me, <laughs> okay? Yes, congrats to Steve. Speedy Steve, yeah, good for you. So. What can we use instead? And I see a lot of good examples. In my point of view is what Esther's saying. Um, from, I would say from my perspective is, is good. Um, to me, to me, yeah, maybe. You could, you could probably get away with that. Good. According to you, French Leo, you can, you can say that. But you usually probably only say, say it in an argument, right? when you're making a reference to something that someone else had said, right? According to you, um, if, if for example, I, I tell you something is a mistake and I have told you that it isn't a mistake in the past, okay? According to NASA, good, we're gonna colonize the moon in 2050. I don't know if Vivek can wait that long. <laughs> okay. 
Now, Esther's saying, according to Sean, Steve was the first student who spotted the mistake. Now, that's a good sentence, Esther. I would say the only thing about this, the only thing about that is um, that, that is actually a fact. Steve was the first, okay? So if you say, according to Sean, um, it sounds like maybe, maybe there's a little bit of doubt there. Okay, so how about this instead? Keep it simple. If you ask me, if you ask me, this is a very common way of uh, introducing our opinion. If you ask me, it's a good idea for students to wear uniforms. Now, don't use that in a formal essay, okay? Don't use that. According to, <laughs> according to Sean, Sean is smart and handsome. <laughs> That's right. In my opinion, it is good, right? In my opinion, it's a good idea. If you ask me, it's a good idea, but not according to me. Okay? All right, guys. So as I said, um, premium subscribers, I, I'm going to put your homework on the blog. You're going to have some comma homework. Uh, next week, we're going to be starting the next unit. Okay? So I'll give you guys lots of homework to do for the week. And it's now time for me to pop out of this here. There we go. Green screen. Green screen, blue face. Young Life is saying, according to my opinion, no, definitely don't say that either. Good, good question because I guess your opinion is not you. But yeah, don't, don't say that. Um, don't make any reference to anything you have done with according. Okay? But good question. That's a really good one. All right, so guys, always a pleasure uh, to see you here, okay? Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a highlight of my week to, to, to jump in here and teach you guys um, in this little global uh, classroom we've got here. It's fantastic. And of course, keep, keep spreading the word. Let's get more people in here. Let's get hundreds of people in here. Why not? Yeah, let's get, let's get crazy. Um, yeah, tell your friends. Uh, tell your neighbors, tell your neighbor's friends, tell your neighbor's friend's uncle's daughter. Um, get everybody here, okay? And uh, keep putting questions on, on Facebook. I'll, I'll try to, to answer as many of your questions on Facebook as I can, although we've got Nicole and Karim and, and Josh and people answering questions on Facebook as well. Keep watching the other classes. Again, you've got Josh, you've got Nicole, Good, you've got Abby, you've got, yeah, you've got Neil too. And of course me, yeah. So you can come back here next week. I'll be here. Um, I hope you join me. Have a good week, have a good weekend. Stay warm, stay dry. <laughs> um, keep practicing your English, make, make terrible mistakes and, um, and learn from them. And, uh, and we'll see you here next time. Okay guys, until then. French Leo saying au, au revoir. Yeah? All right, bye bye. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. Also, if you want the full experience of being a student in a smart live class with things like homework and teacher feedback, follow the link and become a premium subscriber. Also, if you want to see more videos from this class, check out our playlist.